All right, here we go. Now it is time, you found a property, right? You used one of the five methods that we talked about to find a property. Now it's time to actually evaluate that property and make sure that it's a property that you can make a deal on, you can make money on, and actually help the seller, okay? So the first thing when you're getting ready to evaluate a property is making sure that your data source, the, the source that's telling you the price of homes that were recently sold is accurate. And this is why I say you do not want to use Zillow.com, okay? It's not completely accurate. They have not figured out the process or the system yet. Again, great for finding properties, not the best for evaluating properties. If you ever have a homeowner say, well, the Zestimate is, Stop listening at that point. <laughs> Keep listening to them for their sake, but uh, know that the Zestimate is not accurate, all right? So the accurate data of, of how you're, the data that you're gonna use to evaluate the property is really, really important. The first place you can get your data from is from the local county where the property is located, okay? Go to the county website. See what homes have actually been selling for in the area. That's gonna be extremely, extremely accurate, okay? The second place that I like to get my accurate data from is the MLS. Now, if you're new to real estate investing and you're watching this video, you cannot just go and get access to the MLS if you're not an agent. So there's only two ways that I know how to get access to the MLS, legitimately. One is be an agent. Two is become a friend with an agent who will help you and give you this data and information every time you have a property. Now, I'll give you a third one. The third one is become a assistant to an agent and they can legally give you access to the MLS, okay? If you become an assistant to an agent, all right? So that's the second way. I love, love, love this method. It's easy, it's simple, especially once you learn how to use it. It's great for getting accurate ARVs or after repair value on a property, okay? Now the third thing that you can use, this is what we use here in Illinois, Chicagoland area, we use Redfin. Redfin for us is directly tied to the MLS, all right? So when we, would go, when we go on Redfin and we look up the price, if I, I can take 100 properties and match them from Redfin to the MLS, and it'll give me an accurate price. So if it sold for 150,000 on Redfin, it sold for 150,000 on the MLS. So that's why we love Redfin, and we, I wanna show you how to use that another time so that you can see how to app, uh, actually do this. Now, you probably saw my uh, little puppy here in the last video. This is actually what I use uh, to erase the board. Forgive me, uh, pet lovers, I can guarantee that no animal was hurt in the making of this video. So, we are gonna erase this, and I'm actually gonna go over evaluating your first deal, okay? So let's say you've got a property. So property A, all right? This property, you're trying to figure out how to make an offer on, right? So let's just say this property is located, and the other thing I like to do, a lot of people teach just take three comps. Just take three comps in an area, right? I like to do five. When I was, when I was first getting started in real estate investing, uh, I literally felt like a kindergartner. I knew nothing, and um, every time I would evaluate a property, I was overpriced, overpriced, overpriced. And, or the worst part, which wasn't too bad, but it was bad to me, I was, much, uh, I was underpriced. So I would lose money on deals right? Because I was underpriced, okay? And people would see, man, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. He's got a great property under contract, but he's selling it for very little. I mean, heck, I could sell this again. I actually had a property that I sold to an investor. He ended up selling it again without really doing any work to it and making over $60,000 on the deal, and I'd only made seven. So guys, this is why it's so important, and I'll talk about that deal another time, but this is why it's so important to really know your numbers. So we've got property A that we're trying to make an offer on. So what I like to do is I like to find five comparable properties that are all in the condition that I know this property needs to be in, and I get the average of those five properties. So let's just say property number one was sold for 98000 Property number two sold for 110,000. Property number three sold for 105,000. Property number four for 78,000. And then property number five, let's say it sold for $96,000. So I'm gonna take out my calculator here real quick. We're gonna add all this up. 
So we got 98,000 plus 110,000 plus 105,000 plus 78,000 plus 96,000. That's gonna give me a total of 487,000. Okay, bear with me if it's wrong, I'm doing this quickly. Now we're gonna divide that by five. Right, so my average is $97,400. That's probably my ARV, okay? That's gonna be the number I'm gonna use to evaluate property A, all right? So $97,400. Let's take our handy dandy pet eraser here again. <laughs> all right, you guys, hopefully, hopefully none of my boys find that. I think that's like one of their favorite toys or something like that, I'm using it for eraser. Terrible, all right. So 97,000, $400. Now, the next thing that you're gonna to wanna to do, because what you're not gonna go do, because let's say property A needs work, it needs windows, it needs, um, it needs a new roof, it needs new flooring, carpeting, it needs a lot of work, right? So what you're gonna do is you're going to not offer $97,400 to the seller. What you're gonna do next is you're gonna multiply that $97,400 by 70%. You can do it by 70% or you can do it by 0.7. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna times it by 0.7, okay? That instantly drops it down 30%, again, or you can subtract 30%. And my new ARV for this property, or not ARV, but my offer on this property is $68,180, okay? But we can't stop there because you're not the one who's gonna be doing the repairs, right? Someone else is gonna be doing the repairs, whoever you assign it to. Maybe the general contractor or an investor or a hard money lender. Someone else, your, your aunt, your uncle, whoever wants to be in real estate and do this side of it, right? The fixing up side, you're gonna sell it to them. Maybe Chip and Joanna Gaines, right? Just kidding. But uh, okay, so the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take off 30%, right? So that's, the, that's just the, the number you're gonna take off. Then you're gonna take off the repair cost. The cost for repairs, you're gonna subtract that amount as well. Let's just say to make this a nice even number, we take off 15,180 so we can get to an even number. So you're gonna subtract the repairs. Let's say again, it costs 15,180 bucks. That leaves you with $53,000 that you can even remotely make an offer to the person on, right? But at $53,000, you're not gonna make any money. We're in this business to make money. Yes, we're in this business to help people, but we're all got started in this business to make money. So how much money do you wanna make? Do you wanna make 5,000, 10,000, 12,000? Okay, how about we just say for your first deal, for your first deal, you're gonna make $7,000. All right, so again, this is a market correction. Let's just call it that, market correction. You're gonna take off 30%, then you're gonna take off the repairs, and then you're gonna take off your fee. I'm actually gonna grab a new marker here too. This one's no good, throw that. Then you're gonna take out your fee, right? So 7,000 or 53,000 minus 7,000 leaves us with, what is that, 46,000? Here we go, $46,000. This is probably what you're gonna to wanna to offer. And in the beginning, I was so bad at this, I would just round down. So if I was at 49,000, I'd round down to 40. If I was at 110, 111,000, I'd round down to 100,000, right? So for your first offer, just have newbie buffer space. I call it newbie buffer space. So take off another $6,000, and that's gonna leave you with $40,000. That's gonna be your offer to the seller. The ARV is $97,400, but your offer is gonna be $40,000, okay? And this offer that you get right here, we call this the MAO. Many of you probably know this, but I'm gonna tell it to you. This is what's called your maximum allowable offer. You can't offer anything higher than that. If you do, you won't make money, or you can't fulfill your promise to the seller and get their property under contract and sell it quickly for cash, right? 
All right, you guys, that's it for this video. Again, this is how you evaluate and uh, find your maximum allowable offer, okay? In the next video, in the next video, video, we're gonna be talking about how you can actually, once you get your maximum allowable offer, now it's time to go see the property, talk with the seller, negotiate, and get the property under contract, and that's in the next video.